My mother was so beautiful that when I was very small, I still remember. I said I asked her why she should not join and contest in a beauty pageant. That was how beautiful she was. So beautiful is untrue. To be carried by her for nine months is a unique privilege, a unique honor. And very kind woman indeed. Very kind. It was that kindness that brought about her illness after they killed 28 people in her compound. That we must continue because that is what she wants. And that's exactly what I'm doing. We remember Ugoeze Kanu, mother of our supreme leader and supreme servant of Biafra. We remember all mothers that perished during the Biafran War for freedom, and those mothers who lost their husbands, their brothers, their uncles, their sons, their daughters, their neighbors, their classmates, their friends. We must take this opportunity, and for some, another opportunity, to redirect our attention, our minds and hearts, to our past, to a time and to a place where the average woman had above average courage, values, and devotion, not just for herself, but to her compound, kindred, village, and community she was a part of whether by birth or marriage. We recall the stories of our forefathers, about our foremothers, stories united by common themes of loyalty, hard work, piety, honesty, good, and greatness. Certainly, other women in other places also did great things, but today, as it was 90 years ago, our mothers stood still not, marching and waging and willing to sacrifice everything sacrificable in the market town of Abba, in their thousands and tens of thousands, for the hope that their people would not only perish physically, but mentally as well. Without Wi-Fi, internet, foreign hair products, mega churches, reality shows, and similar modern day luxuries or distractions, daughters of farmers, wives of fishermen, mothers of freedom fighters found the way and ways to organize themselves to battle the greatest empire of their time. Ibibio mothers, Igbo mothers, women from Boni, Ngwa women, Calabao women, without the demarcation of Niger Delta or South South, stood collectively as one. Women from the same value system, same culture, same heritage, same homeland. Again, without nuclear energy or fighter jets or a chief of army staff or a petroleum trust fund, these women were able to change the course of history with changes in colonial power structures and authority, leading to reforms and the eventual desires for independence throughout Black Africa. We remember also the water-walking Africans, those regarded as embarking on the first freedom march in the history of America, with Biafran women choosing death over slavery, singing in glory of their belief in Chukwokike, Abiyama, as far back as 1803, 
and what has now become the legend of Igbo landing. We remember Margaret Igbo, a pioneer and premier champion of women's rights. We remember the activist Mary Okezi, whose memo in 1930 remains the primary account of the Abao women's riots. We remember the first female certified doctor from the former eastern region, Ada Nzirimo, whose mother rallied Biafran women during the war effort. We remember our female volunteers on the battlefield, in the hospital rooms, those in the refugee camps, those who risked walking many miles to find food and supplies for us or our fathers. They are all the epitome of what it means to be a Biafra. Ada Biafra, Adiaha Biafra, Alata Biafra. Even though poverty, greed, jealousy, selfishness, and confusion have taken their toll on the minds and behaviors of many of our people, including our women, in the last several decades, propping up rather less qualified role models, diverting their potential energy and assembly for uninspiring matters and affairs. We still have witnessed the resilience and reemergence of our women across the board. We have seen our women again take to the streets in protest, campaign, and educate our people for the restoration of our homeland. Our renewed agitation, led by and supported by our mothers, our wives, our daughters, have again given hope to the hopeless, brought about joy to the dejected, and faith to those who still want to believe in the ability of their people, that their ability surpasses their ambition to restore a great state. To all women of Biafra, those married to our men, those who are daughters of our men, those who are mothers to our men, aunts and sisters to our people, in-laws and stepmothers, those descended from the land of the rising sun, to those whose upbringing is that of England or France, America and Canada, Malaysia or Zambia, with that single connection, that lone strand of Biafran DNA, we not only acknowledge you in your current career, success, education, trade or skill as a farmer or fashion designer, a banker or groundnut seller, an athlete or actress, but expect and encourage all to remember, as we do, where we come from. To remember those women that previously did the dirty work that we in part enjoy today with their expectation to preserve and protect the homeland. I too believe my mother to be beautiful and kind, as did my father believing in the exceptional character of his mother. What about you? You decide. We shall continue.